What's going on everyone? It's Mike back again and this is gonna go mad now. Right, so we, we, we've done all the last few weeks and it's been very boring. It's now gonna hot up now we're getting into August. So um, I'm making a pact that there will be a video every day in August and I'm even going away on holiday and I promise there will still be a video every single day because now the season's hotting up. We, we're two weeks away from the Premier League. We are starting to move for players um it's now starting to become a bit more encouraging maybe let's let's talk about that in a minute but all in all we're getting to the heat of it now and and i found the last month the last six weeks just incredibly boring being everton fans uh being an everton fan because nothing's really happened you know the result that all this you know about the ken Wright going and the board changing and all this excitement and actually Ken Wright is still there holding all the pieces, um, and that disappoints me. Bashiri is still there. That disappoints me, if I'm being honest. So, it's been, you know, it's been a negative four, six weeks. Awful. But we've got to get into sort of go mode. We've got to, we've got to get into it a little bit. We've got to be more, um, not positive, because I don't, I don't think I know an Everton fan that's positive at the minute, but a fan that, I want to be a fan that's realistic with where we are, and I want to be a fan that wants to take this season by the scruff of the neck, pull the socks up and get going. Just like we're doing life, you know, that's what I believe we should be doing. Um, so we're going to talk about a few players, a few things, a few transfers, a few rumours, a few links. Um, but most importantly, we're going to talk about the game the weekend against Stoke. We're going to talk about the behind closed door games against Monza, we're going to play again about the game the weekend against Sports in Lisbon um, and we're going to talk about the players that we've been linked with, players that have come in, players that could potentially still be going out. Um, so let's get into it and let's start with the game the weekend, Everton 1, Stoke 0, a game that let's be honest was yet another really Boring game, really poor performance from a, an attacking perspective. There is no attacking creativity in this Everton team at this moment in time. There is no, you know, there, there is players that can break the lines, there's players that can play nice passes, but in that final third in the penalty area, it all breaks down. No one's prepared to sort of shoot from 20 yards. No one's going to run at a centre-back and cause problems. It's all very turgid, very simple. And Stoke could deal with that. Stoke dealt with it all game, really, apart from the goal. Um, I would argue that they kept on getting in behind us. They got in behind us a few times, left and right back. Um, I don't think we looked as composed with the ball either. I think it was almost like... It was almost like this team that we played um, were the Premier League team and we weren't. We, we were really, really lacking in loads of areas and um, the first half I thought was particularly poor. But I've got to be honest, I didn't think the second half was much better. As much as Sean Dyche said about the second half, I thought, I thought they were both equally poor games. I think it's interesting that Everton have got all of a sudden this game behind closed doors against Monza. Um, I think that's interesting. Um, you know, is Sean Dodge happy with the preparation? Um, is it a case of it's just a an additional game? Is it something he wants to work with? Is it an idea that he's come up with? I, I mean, I don't know, but we were we are really poor in that th final third, that transition, and you know there is players technically that in that in our team in our squad that could help that. You know, players weirdly like Deli Ali. Playing players like Andre Gomez further forward where it can release a pass. But the the issue is going to be the front man. You know, Dan Juma proved that he's not a striker. And that's not criticism of him. He was isolated. He was trying to link up a little bit, but it was tough for him. Neil Mulpay has proved time and time again that he's not an Everton player, yet he's still here. You know, we still can't get rid of him. And that's, that's incredibly disappointing. Um... I, you know, if if this squad is as it is right now, going into this season, as I have said many times, I think we go. I think we go down. I think we go down fighting, but I think we go down. I just don't think there's enough goals in this team, and there's certainly not enough creativity. And 
you know, Sean Dodge had come out at the start of the window saying, you know, we'd, we'd, it was a lot of work and um, essentially he was expecting that to happen and it's just been really poor. It's just been a really, really poor window. Um, I feel sorry for him, to be honest, because he, he's got these group of players that, you know, I'm sure he's wanted players. You know, we, we, we all know that we were linked with Troy El Halap. Hell, but he, I can't say his name, Troy Orman. We were linked with him for a long time and he ended up going to Atlanta. We've been linked with several players. We've been linked with Ian Acho. Um, and none of these players have come in. We've been linked with Willie Nonto, not come in. Um, we've not spent a penny, you know, and when you think there's 45 million from Anthony Gordon, there was money there before, there's, there's the TV money. It doesn't really make sense that Everton can't spend right now. I don't understand. Um, I'm not going to sit here and pretend to understand. I understood last season. I even understood to a degree the season before. But I don't understand this season. Um, so it's disappointing. It's disappointing there's no getting around it. Um, you know, we've still got players on the book like Mulpay, like McNeil, like Michael Keane, who looks like he's going to be starting and playing every game next season. And You know, I... I I think as Everton fans, I just think it's fair to say we didn't sign up to this. You know, we didn't sign up to that. We didn't sign up to seeing Michael Keane after he was dropped by two managers previous. You know, we, we I certainly did not sign up to be watching Michael Keane every week. Yet I am, and I suspect I will be. You know, you've got centre-halves at the club that shouldn't be there. You know, I don't need to name them. I name them all the time, but... You know, when you're going up against teams like Stoke, and if I'm being honest, we were, I'm not going to say we were outplayed, but I, I certainly think that Everton didn't deserve to win the game. Um, I think we've got big problems. I think we've got big problems and we're not addressing them. We're not addressing them and it's going to be another turgid season. It's going to be awful. Um, and I'll worry about that. So, you know, going into this game against Monza, I don't know what he's going to do. We're not going to see it. But I really hope that he tries to do something different because what he has been doing has not scored lots of goals in pre-season, has not made us look fluid in attack, has not made us look like we can carry the ball particularly well, has not made us look like we're particularly quick. Lewis Dobbin has been a little bit of a standout in terms of being prepared to beat a man. But, you know, he's still very young and, you know, completely raw. So that's a concern, but... This this Monza game, he has to see something else. You know, I'm not expecting highlights. I'm not expecting loads of, you know, press and things to discuss what happened. But I am expecting Everton to to win the game. But I'm I'm expecting him to test something, to do something, because we go into this game against Sporting Lisbon, and I've got to be honest, it would be really disappointing if we lose the game comfortably and we aren't. In the game, you know, we aren't attacking. I just don't think that helps for a pre-season game. It doesn't help going into a, a start of a new season, especially a game at home against Fulham. Um, so, yeah, I worry. I, I worry. Um, the Sporting Lisbon game is, is really key for me, to be honest, because usually I would say things like, oh, it, it's just a pre-season game. It doesn't matter. But actually, Everton do this quite a lot. They have quite a... A rubbish pre-season fixture list you know teams at championship league one it might be teams abroad that aren't in particularly high divisions and then they'll play one decent team at the end usually a goodison park um you've got other premier league teams who have played each other all summer newcastle played i think it was brighton i think they've played villa i think there's there's a number of teams that have um played decent opposition. Burnley have played teams like Betis and... Who did they beat? 3-0 the other night? The other week? Somebody like Sevilla or somebody like that. You know, it, it, the, the Premier League teams are, are playing teams that are, have got some quality, albeit fitness will be down, I get that, but they're playing teams with quality. Well, Everton can't say that. Everton, Everton truly can't say that. And while there's going to be teams that are going to be going into this season, absolutely Premier League ready. Everton won't be. Everton absolutely won't be. Um, and, it, and, it's, and it concerns me. It really, really concerns me. You know, especially when you look at, you know, Fulham going into this season and 
you know, they've, they've played games like Chelsea, albeit they've lost, but they've played games like Chelsea. They've played really difficult at times opposition. Everton haven't. Everton haven't. So that, that worries me. Um, however, look, if rumours are to be, be believed and, you know, Fabrizio Romano has come out and said it today, so look, I've got no reason to doubt him. But Everton are close to signing Yusuf Chimiti, a young player, played 21 times for sports in Lisbon last season, scoring three goals. This is a kid that is 19 years old. Um, I've got absolutely no doubt um, similar to Moyes King, similar to Adamola Lutman, similar to sim, similar to these players that were young and broke through, and you know have these moments of brilliance. I have absolutely no doubt this is going to be another talent that comes into our football club and wastes their career. And and I say that because Everton are so awful with developing youth. And developing quality players, you know, we've had we've had a few. We've had we've had centre backs. We've had Mason Holgate. We had Brendan Galloway. We had the lad that we signed from. What was his name? He looked fantastic. He was the centre half. We signed him like one and a half million. I can't remember his name, but he looked brilliant. He looked absolutely fantastic. I mean, you can even argue players like Ben Godfrey. We've gone backwards since joining. It's just, it's just, I, I just worry. I just worry when it comes to Everton signing players like this. I just, I just, I don't want it to be a waste. I don't want it to be a, I don't want it to be a, a, a player that comes in, comes to England, struggles, doesn't get the game time, um, can't adapt. And then we end up losing ten million pound on in three seasons' time or something. I just, I just don't want that. Um, we've been linked with Chay Adams again, Premier League player. I have no issue with that, but you know, is this if this is truly where we are, then we need an identity change. You know, we need an identity change. You know, we need, we need, we need something catastrophic to happen in a good way at Everton because. The fall from grace is astounding. It's it's truly astounding, and you know I, I am worried. I, I am worried. I am seriously worried. Um, I really, I really do think. I I really do think that we need. Quality. We need some serious quality. We need somebody who can carry the ball from defence to attack. Somebody who can pass through the lines. And we haven't got it. And we haven't had it for years. You know, every single style of play is so repeatable. It goes from the centre half into midfield. Then it goes left or right. And then the striker makes a run into the box. And either left or right, either puts a ball into the box, tries to play it back into the middle through the sort of 18-yard area, 25-yard area, and they either lose the ball, make a stupid shot, or can't find the striker because they've all crammed in and took his space. It just is poor, poor, poor. And you need a player that can break the lines. And we've been linked with players that, that on paper can do that. And they're not Everton players. And that and that's what worries me. And, Everton have been linked with Ross Barkley. Um, that that isn't the answer. That isn't the answer. Ross Barkley, six years ago, seven years ago, was the answer. Absolutely, ball carrying, strong, quick, aggressive, fantastic footballer. Ross Barkley now um, would get no more than a trial. So, look, I'm I'm not I'm not happy. Um, I still think we need another striker, even though we've bought. Potentially, we're bringing in Chimiti in. Um, Neil Morpay shouldn't be starting games. Calvert Lewin, you know, you, you, your number one striker, the striker that you say has been working to get fit all summer, blah, blah, blah. You're seeing videos of him training. I still haven't seen him in the pre season game. Shocking. Um, so, 
yeah, worried, 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 worried. But guys, look, leave it there. Keep smiling. You'll see me again tomorrow. We are going to be doing a video a day. Make sure you hit the like button, subscribe, share, and all that fantastic stuff. And I will be leaving it there. Keep smiling. Peace.